interesting ideas. So Carrie, do you want to just kind of talk about sort of how we traditionally think about vitamin D in the winter uh, and what maybe this new, you know, these new ideas are and how we might think about it differently. And then we'll get into um, early spring sunlight as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so I'm, I am super excited to talk to Jim on Saturday because I have, I think he's going to kind of help me also just connect some dots with this. But we have this idea, right? Uh, or I guess maybe we've been taught that vitamin D drops in the winter. And uh, that when vitamin D drops, that means we're more susceptible to things like illness or disease or you name it because we hear vitamin D is beneficial for preventing cancer. Vitamin D is beneficial for preventing autoimmune conditions. And so, um, and so there's a lot of, there's a lot of, I think, misinformation around that. And my brain went to like, why would the body be so stupid, right? Like if I'm living in Michigan and there's literally no UVB light, which is the sunlight frequency that strikes our skin and makes vitamin D, why would, why, why would it be that I somehow have to supplement it or somehow have to modify it in my body uh, in order to get me through the winter? Uh, it just didn't quite make sense to me. And so I was like, well, there's got to be like, you know, vitamin D has to be a signal for something at a certain time of the year. And there has to be kind of like a cycle, right? Everything in our body is cyclical, melatonin to cortisol, right? It's like there's a cycle of, of things. And so I thought to myself, well, there has to be some sort of seasonal need for vitamin D maybe to drop and then another hormone or pathway to take over. And that's where I started recognizing, first off, and, and Jim's going to go into this in way more detail, but first off, we only measure literally one vitamin D metabolite, and it's the storage form of vitamin D. Uh, and there's, there's hundreds of vitamin D metabolites. I actually don't think anyone gives credit except, except Jim to something <laughs> called lumisterol, which is like, it's like, it's like the stem cell of vitamin D. You know, it can actually become all these vitamin D metabolites once it's made. So I think we're being really myopic in our, our idea that, okay, vitamin D goes low in the winter and that must be uh, related to pathologies. So my my, my thought on this and so what, I, what I've done with the, the past couple of posts I've written is this idea that, yes, we're supposed to start to make as much vitamin D as we can when it's available to us in our location. And early spring is an ideal time to do that, right? And so we can go into what that looks like, Meredith. But then what happens towards the late fall or like, you know, well, I'm sorry, early fall, late summer is that we get typically in our environment in my latitude, 40, 42nd latitude, there's this combination of availability of fructose and availability of fructose. We not, there's research that shows that when uh, we consume fructose, it actually lowers the, my ability to make active vitamin D. It lowers my ability to, or and it, and it increases my ability to degrade vitamin D. So it's like, and so why would nature pair those together? Well, it turns out that I'm supposed to kind of use that signal in the fall in order to gain a little bit of weight, get a little bit of insulin resistance, right? Because I'm preparing, it's a signal to my brain that food scarcity is coming. We, If we only had adaptation based in real time, like all of a sudden it gets cold, well, I can't wait until it gets freezing cold and there's no food available for my body to start prepping me for food scarcity. So the availability of fructose, it lowers vitamin D transiently, right? It's this, it's this false signal that then allows my body to start to gain a little bit of weight, become a little insulin resistant. Now, it, and Jim highlighted this, it's like there is a transient dip in vitamin D. So, I mean, that's like a natural thing, but we've correlated that transient dip in the fall of vitamin D with, oh no, vitamin D levels are going down. And because vitamin D levels are going down, it must mean that we're more predisposed to disease states in, in, in the fall and the winter. Um, and but we, what we find is that it's you're, all we're measuring is the storage form. It changes. There's so many, there's so much more to the picture. But then come winter, we're supposed to have a surge of melatonin, right? We're supposed to have basically more melatonin in the winter because that's made in darkness. It's made it with cold and food scarcity. Like, you know, we get this repair pathway, this AMPK pathway and this repair pathway in the winter because it's dark cold and there's scarcity and all the, and, and it creates, I think in my, in my, my way of looking at it, it creates a circadian mismatch, a seasonal circadian mismatch. When all of a sudden I'm really elevating my vitamin D levels artificially by supplementing 
10,000 units a day. Um, when in fact, my, my, my eyes are telling me at sunrise that the days are shorter and sunset that the days are shorter. My body is telling me it's cold and I'm, it, I'm supposed to be experiencing food scarcity. And so I don't, I think we're meant to flip into the melatonin pathway. And the reason maybe we're seeing issues with disease, you know, uh, states potentially in the winter is because we're not honoring our melatonin production anymore. We're completely tanking our melatonin with artificial light at night. We're tanking our melatonin because we don't get outside as much, you know, we're not getting the sunrise in our eyes to start to make the melatonin. We're not getting infrared like we would have if we were around a campfire, which helps to make subcellular melatonin, right? The blue lights, the artificial light at night is exa- is what's dropping our melatonin in the winter. And so we're not getting the protective effect of melatonin that I think we would be seeing. And so I think our body is built to, to thrive in both seasons. We just have to maximize what's available to us in our location. Bye.